Boys and girls, welcome back. We are still on simplifying algebraic expressions, but we are dealing with division and multiplication at this point. Previously, we dealt with multiplication in a form of distributive law. So now we are on division and multiplication. Always remember board mass. Okay, so now we have got two fractions, 5 over x divided by 2 multiplied by 4x divided by 3. First of all, before you can do multiplication, just check your fraction if it can be simplified. If it can be simplified, simplify it first before you multiply. So let's do that. We're going to say 5 divided by 2. You must never be intimidated by a variable. A variable, you just do your dividing of the numbers and you take the variable along. If there is another variable, uh, as a denominator as well as the numerator if those variables are the same then you just divide them so you mustn't be intimidated okay so let's do that i've got 5x divided by 2 so i don't have any variable so it means the variable i just have to carry along should this uh, fraction be simplified but looking at the way it is it cannot be simplified so it means i must just go straight to multiplication because now this one can also can not be simplified as well. Do not write your fractions in decimal form unless you are told. And at this point, they just say simplify, no decimal fractions. Let's do this. So now when I multiply, I'm just going to use the simplest way of multiplying, which is numerator will multiply numerator and denominator will multiply denominator. Okay, now five multiplied by four, it will give us 20 x multiplied by x, it will give us x squared. That is my numerators done. Now I'm going to my denominators. I'm going to 2 multiplied by 3, which will be 6. You remember that when we are dealing with fractions, we must always simplify the fractions. We don't leave it like this. We must simplify. And when we simplify, what do we do? We always look for the highest common factor of the numerator and the denominator so so that when we found that highest common factor we divide it into both numerator and denominator that is us simplifying okay all right let's do that so we're going to look for the factors of 20 and the factors of 6 uh i think it will be 2 yeah it will be 2 so how many times does 2 goes into 20 it goes 10 times and then my x squared remains x squared. How many times does 2 goes into 6? It goes 3 times. And therefore, my expression is simplified and I am done. How easy was that? I know, right? So now we have got another fraction. I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but then it is w multiplied by 5 divided by w squared. So in this situation, you are dealing with a whole number and a fraction. And when you're dealing with a whole number and a fraction, for your life to be easy, I advise that you make the whole number a fraction. And how do we do that? We do it by dividing by 1. Let's do that. Divide by 1. Why are we dividing by 1? Because it will not change the value of the whole number. Okay, so in this case as well, we are going... 5 numerator by numerator w times 5 is going to be 5w. Do not be confused. The order of writing algebraic expression, we're starting with a number and then a variable later. Even if it's w, w times 5, don't write w5, write 5w, okay? Yes. 1 multiplied by w squared is going to be w squared. So now we have a situation whereby 5w and then w squared. So we have w this side as my numerator and I also have w, two w's as, uh, in the denominator side. Let me rewrite this here just so that it's easily visible for everyone. Uh, 5w squared. And we have to simplify 5, no, we don't have 5. Sorry, it's 5w divided by w squared. Now we are simplifying this fraction. When we simplify this fraction, I want you to look at it in this way. W, w squared is 2w's. W's multiplying. So since I've got 2w's, 
That's my denominator and one W there. This one will divide this one. And then I'm left with only one W as my denominator. And then I will have 5 over W. 5 divided by W. And therefore, that is my final answer. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now we are going to the next one. Remember, I said that before you can do your multiplication, always simplify your fraction if it is possible to simplify. So let's look at this one. I've got 15xy divided by 10y. I've got y there and I've got y here. So it means I can simplify it. I've got 10 and I've, I've got 15 and I've got 10. So it means uh, I can simplify 10 over 50. It can, it, this uh, kind of a fraction, it can be simplified. And how do I simplify a fraction, by the way? I look for the highest common factor of both numerator and denominator. So now I'm going to do that. What is the highest common factor of 5, I mean 15 and 10? It will be 5. The highest common factor it is the number that is high, that is divisible by both numbers. So 5 goes into 15 how many times? It goes three times and into ten. How many times does it go? It goes two times. Remember, simplifying before you do the multiplication makes your life easy because you don't have to simplify at the end sometimes. All right, so now I've got x. There is no x uh, at the denominator side, but I've got y and y. So this y will divide this one. Therefore, it means I no longer have a y because y divide, divided a y. Multiply by 2y divided by 5. Now I'm going to do my multiplication. Uh, there is another method, but I'm not going to jump into it. I'm just going to take you straight to, uh, uh, you know, numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. So I'm going to say 3 times 2 is going to be 6xy because there's an x there, there's a y there. Right. And now I've got 2 multiplied by 5. It will give me a 10. Now I have to simplify this fraction because I've got 6 over 10. I sure do have the highest common factor that goes into 2. I mean, it goes into 6 and goes into 10. And what is that number? It is 2. How do I find that, guys? Uh, I'm just going to say factors of 6. This is how I find my factors, okay? And this is something that you must also do. That's if you are not uh, finding them easy. So I'm just going to write all the factors of 6. 1, 2, 3, and 6. And factors of 10. 1, 2, 5, and 10. And then I said, when I simplify, what do I do? I look for the highest and a common Factor. I already have my factors there. So which one it is high between this one and this one? The high is 2. And it is common. That is why I'm saying 2. See that? Yeah. So how many times does that 2 now goes into 6? It goes 3 times and I'm going to have 3xy. How many times does 2 goes into 10? It goes 5 times. Then my answer is, final answer is 3xy over 5. Well done to you if you got it right. So now we are going to do another one. It is somehow different, but really the principle is just the same. First of all, we are checking if whether we can simplify these fractions first. If we can't, then we are going to the sign there. Can you see that a fraction is dividing a fraction? So when a fraction is dividing a fraction, no need to panic there. This division sign has to change to become a multiplication. And when that happens, the fraction on your right or the fraction after the division sign it has to be written as its reciprocal or as an inverse or it's upside down. Let's do that. I'm going to write, remember, uh, this, the number after the division sign is the one that is going to be written as its reciprocal. Okay, so I'm going to have 5x divided by y 
multiplied now i have changed the division sign into multiplication okay and when i do that when i say write this as it's reciprocal i simply mean that which what the the, the number that was the denominator must be a numerator and the numerator must be the denominator that is it's reciprocal okay so it's going to be 9x it was my denominator now it is becoming my numerator okay yes um if we were advanced with this division thing and multiplication thing this five will cancel this five uh, but then because we are doing the numerator to numerator denominator to denominator, let's do that and we'll simplify at the end okay but if you're comfortable with that method that i just said you go ahead and do it okay now we're going to have five multiplied by nine five multiplied by nine it will be five nines five five ten fifteen twenty five fifteen five forty forty five forty five so it's going to be forty five x times x is x squared and then y five times y is going to be five y now we don't quickly rush to leave our solution we have to make sure that we simplify always simplify your fraction now we can see that we've got a y there and we've got a y there so a y will divide a y and then we no longer have a y and now at this point we can look for the highest common factor or we can just simply say 45 divided by 5 how many times does 5 goes into 45 5 10 15 20 5 30 5 45 it goes nine times yeah then we have nine x squared as our answer i hope that makes sense boys and girls next time we meet we'll be doing substitution 